The judge who presided over the infamous and bloody Salem witch trials, John Hathorn, lived on Hathorn Hill in Danvers, Massachusetts. And it's most certainly a fitting coincidence that this same location would be home to the Danvers State Hospital, a notorious institution with a very dark history. The hospital, which opened in 1878, would come to be known for the brutal mistreatment of patients and associated deaths. As a result, the Danvers State Hospital was reputed to be one of the most haunted locations on Earth. Danvers State Hospital and its extensive infrastructure was designed to be a self-sustaining community. This meant that everything it needed to operate could be found on site. It was a beautiful, elaborate building and had been widely celebrated by architectural enthusiasts. It had red brick construction and towering Gothic spirals. On the outside, the facility was stately and noble looking, a misleading cover for the alleged horrors that took place within its walls. Danvers State Hospital was originally known as the State Lunatic Asylum at Danvers. At the time, the term lunatic was a socially appropriate catch-all word used to classify those afflicted with mental illness. In the late 1800s, the common medical theory was that people with psychological problems could be completely cured with the help of specially designed facilities like Danvers. The State Lunatic Asylum at Danvers enjoyed a favorable reputation, at least initially. The facility employed 125 people, and in the first three decades of operation, boasted the treatment of as many as 10,000 total patients. With such a positive reputation, Danvers became a magnet facility, attracting patients from around the country. But like so many similar institutions in the United States, the designed maximum occupancy seemed to be a forgotten metric. By the 1930s, the hospital housed as many as 2,000 residents. While the administrators of Danvers lobbied the state of Massachusetts for more money and more critical resources, those requests were unanswered. Living conditions were far below basic hygienic standards. Patients frequently walked through the hallways completely naked, as clothing resources were in short supply. Patients were malnourished, they were given needed medication inconsistently, and were unbathed. And of course, psychological treatment fell by the wayside. With order at the facility unraveling quickly, staff at Danvers resorted to faster, more unconventional methods of treatment. These new treatment tactics were exceptionally unethical, and brutally abusive. Shock therapy, where powerful electric shocks were administered to bound patients, became the norm. The idea that strong jolts of electricity could alter a patient's brain for the better was accepted among medical staff at the facility. Alternatively, it would be used as a scare tactic to control patient behavior. Those who misbehaved were often put into straitjackets and locked away. Eventually, shock therapy would become a second choice to lobotomies at Danvers. In the late 1930s, the medical community was looking for a solution to the overcrowding crisis facing mental health facilities across the country. Many looked to lobotomies as a potential and permanent solution that would render patients with severe mental illness, especially those with a propensity for violence, passive enough to leave the facility. By 1939, the patient population of Danvers had ballooned to 2,360, and the hospital, still lacking adequate resources and staffing, would see as many as 278 of those patients die at the facility that year alone. Out of desperation, the medical staff at Danvers willfully embraced lobotomies as a near-term fix for the increasingly dire situation. The medical science of the day pointed to lobotomies as an all-purpose cure for any kind of mental illness. Danvers is often regarded as the birthplace of the prefrontal lobotomy. But contrary to the original intent, 
Many lobotomy patients at Danvers were reported to just aimlessly wander through the halls. Many of them would stare blankly at walls and act as though they were in a drug-induced daze. And instead of being cured and allowed to move on to other assisted facilities, often they were not allowed to leave and remained as part of the growing population of residents living and dying within the walls of the hospital. The lack of funding and resources continued to plague the facility, and by the 1960s, buildings fell into total disrepair. Eventually, the state intervened and parts of Danvers State Hospital were shut down by 1969. Other parts of the facility were actually used through 1992. When the hospital ceased operations, the imposing abandoned building drew curiosity among ghost hunters and photographers, seeking to document the notoriously haunted location in a state of decay. But because the building was closed to the public, documented ghost hunts at the former hospital are scarce. Many people have been arrested trying to sneak into the haunted property, seeking a chance encounter with one of the many tortured souls that may have lingered behind. In 2005, a development company decided to buy the now rundown property and demolished a large portion of the buildings. The property underwent a major renovation that turned the once grim asylum into a modern luxury apartment complex. However, the project faced a major delay in 2007 when a mysterious fire broke out, causing substantial damage. Some attributed the fire to a curse invoked by the tormented spirits of dead patients. The quote, Hell House on the Hill, which is one of Danvers' many locally adorned nicknames, looks immaculate today. Since its closure, the former hospital has enjoyed a spotlight in popular culture as well. The horror writer H.B. Lovecraft used Danvers as the main inspiration for the fictional Arkham Sanitarium. Today, alongside a brighter, modern use for the facility, lies a sobering reminder of the hospital's grim history. Two nearby cemeteries contain 770 bodies belonging to former Danvers patients. Many of their headstones have numbers instead of names. Many families with relatives at Danvers were ashamed of the association. As such, administrators at Danvers commissioned hundreds of anonymous headstones. Many of these graves remain unidentified to this day. It's no surprise that Danvers is regarded as one of the most haunted locations in the world. While most of the facility has been demolished and completely rebuilt, history will ensure that the dark and fascinating legacy of the Danvers State Hospital will live on. My name is Scott, and thank you so much for watching. We're a group of curious and passionate humans, creating documentary-style content for those who share our curiosity ask questions, and seek to dig deeper in a world where almost everything isn't quite what it seems. We are Mystery Syndicate. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, leave a comment, and give this video a like. And to be notified when we post new videos, hit that notification bell. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Patreon. And for exclusive merchandise, visit our website at www.mysterysyndicate.com. From all of us at Mystery Syndicate, thank you again. We sincerely appreciate your support.